just about to start okay. Hare Krishna so we'll just turn on the video for some time and uh, we're just about to start Or if not, I can send it immediately. My name. I'll just send to you again. So, this is the end and first topic, I will like to start to say just one one thing that is new is green in your mind. So that's it. So maybe just one point. We are not our body, we are the soul. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Thank you. That's a good point. Like that, you know, yes, you know, so. Uh, you know what the GIPA? Yeah. 
for yes. God. Yes. G for God. Yes. I for identity. Yes. T for transmigration. Yes. A for in life. Exactly. <laughs> good over that. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Let's put the people on Zoom and we can start. Okay. Anybody else would like to recollect that? One more point. Welcome all of you, both online and online. <laughs> Okay, let us ask everybody. A for A for association and B for anybody else? B for Bhagavad Gita and C for chanting and D for diet. Yeah, diet is it. And then E for etiquette and engagement. Yes. So today we are going to a new session, <coughs> second session. See, the mastermind behind the mysterious universe, which is the same point which I told you, G. Yeah? We are not all in all, there is a God in control. That is the point. Uh, Transmission will come tomorrow along with the law of karma. Also. They both go together. We'll go back to the next session. Today is on God. Okay. See, this is the sum and substance of today's session here. By observing the world around us scientifically, we can see behind our supreme intelligent designer. Behind this universe. So first, we will discuss your observation of the world around you. Then we can see the scientists for what they observe. We will discuss two million dollar questions and activity time and what is the brand duty of all educated people. So two important questions will be discussed today. The source of the cosmos and source of life. Online it is. Is it here also is echoing actually? Here also echo is coming. Also, here also it's echoing. You're able to see this? Yes. Yeah. Is the sound clear for all of you? Is it clear for all the devotees attending online? Is it clear? Hari Krishna, yes, it's clear. Ah, I approve it's clear for them now. That's yeah, clear. Yes. Now the echo is reduced now. Yeah. Okay. So in case they find it uh, difficult, a little it can be increased. A little and you can a little bit increase. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, it's better now. Yeah. 
Actually, it's going from my mic into this uh, mic. Is it all right? Uh, Ramsan Pub is all right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So. You see, the contemporary worldview about the universe in which we are living. One of you read the red side, another one can read the blue side, okay? Yeah, please read it on the left side, one of you. Give the mic to them. You have one cordless mic for them, yeah. Okay. See, the contemporary world view is everything originated from a Big Bang. There is no God whatsoever. According to Big Bang theory, this is the definition. A point of infinite temperature, infinite density, infinitesimal in size, it's physically indescribable, mathematically unverifiable, beyond all conceptions of space and time. So, actually, there are more than 20 theories, but this is one of the well-known theories in Big Bang theory. So, uh, this is one uh, viewpoint. And the very key point, somebody can read, uh, give the mic, uh, please. Very good. God, create, God created everything and everyone. The very word cosmos means an orderly, harmonic, systematic universe. And there is an Oxford dictionary meaning of uh, the word cosmos, yeah. An orderly, harmonious, systematic universe, yeah. Yes. Dr. Albert Einstein said, I believe in God who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of the universe. I believe that intelligence is manifested throughout all nature. The basics of scientific work is the conviction that the world is an ordered and comprehensible entity and not a thing of chance. Science must learn to live in harmony with all these magnificent gifts of God to humanity. Yeah. Actually, there are many people who will want to prove Einstein to be an atheist. You can go to the Google search yourself. You will see that Einstein did not like the conception of God, you know, who uh, the kind of, uh, you know, biblical conception where we repent or burn. God's creed is not Really? Yes. And also, Einstein wasn't uh, sure about whether God is a person or God is an energy uh, intelligence. But he definitely uh, says, even if you put Google search and go, you'll find at least five, ten definitions of his understanding of God as someone, an extraordinary intelligent being. So he says that very clearly, even in Senate meetings, he said, if I were to meet God, I will ask him, how did he create this universe with such great intelligence, he says. So this is one of his quotes. See, this is the Big Bang theory uh, assumes that everything has sprung from some one point of high density. On the other hand, the Vedic view says there is a personality from whom everything has sprung, as you see here. This is Mahavishnu, from whose body all the universes emanate. Yase Kanishwasita Kala Mathavalambya Jivanti Loma Vilaja Jagadanda Nata Vishnur Mahan Sayas Jagada Vishesho Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami Brahma says this verse um, by one long exhalation of Vishnu, Mahavishnu, the universes are created, and by one inhalation they all again go back into him. So, Bhutva, Bhutva, Praliyate. They are created and they are annihilated, he says. Somebody may say, wow, really? Even Big Man talks about Big Bang and Big Crunch. Huh? This seems to be very similar. Yes, it seems to be similar, but the source is from a person. The source is not from a point. Huh? So, ask yourself, all of you, you have seen your father, you have seen your grandfather. Is there anyone who has seen grandfather's father here, any of you? 
Uh, in India, sometimes people say, people in village especially, because in villages they marry the people very early. Uh, so some people have got to see the grandfather's father also. Uh, but even in case you didn't see, you, you are confident that he existed, right? You know, and even above him, there must have been many generations of men who might have, who might have existed. So we go up, 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 mm, above the, you know, the entity from which everything has sprung up. Is it a person or is it a stone chunk? What do you think it is likely to be? Yes? Person. It's a person. <laughs> because you will never find from stone chunk or from dead matter, any living forms arising even today. Mm. If living forms arose from matter long, long ago, it should also be arising now also. Correct now? For example, the light is emanating from the sun long, long ago. It's continuing to emanate for millions of years. So, you cannot show one entity arising from matter. That's what I told you yesterday also. You can see from living body, chemicals come. But for, by combination of chemicals, nobody can produce a living body. There is no chemical evolution theory. It's a myth. Or uh, it is a very good uh, speculation of uh, some 200 gram of gray matter, we can say. Nothing more than that. So, therefore, on the other hand, we have evidence to show that from living bodies, many things come up. Like, for example, America was an uninhabited place at one time. Huh? When Europeans entered into America, then Columbus discovered America, correct? So, you can see within a few hundred years how it has become developed. Huh? Broad roads and skyscraper buildings and transportation system, communication system, everything has developed. Because the living being can manipulate matter and develop it. But matter doesn't produce any living forms. So, these were two distinct things you can see, Jada and Chetan. Jada means dead matter. Chetan means conscious entity. So, we all are what? Are we Jada or Chetan? The Chetan, the conscious entities. Like you all are aware that you are sitting here, right? Is there anyone not aware? <laughs> you are sitting here. You are conscious. If somebody pinches you, you feel the pain. If it is cold, you wear a sweater. If it is hot, you will probably want to AC or something. You are conscious. So, conscious entities are called Chetan. So, we are conscious and we have come from conscious entities. And if you go up, 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 you will find ultimately a conscious entity can actually uh, you know, produce matter and manipulate matter. For example, from human bodies, you can see, for example, the human bodies release uh, stool and urine, for example. Those are also matter, solids and liquids and gases. They are emanating from human body. Correct, no? So, which means uh, from living bodies, matter emanates. But you will see that. But from matter, there is no uh, evidence of any living bodies arising. That's what you are saying. That means the universe has both matter and living forms. That means the origin must have been living form. That's the point. So, this is from Bhagavad Gita. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mantas sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samanvitaha Krishna says, I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me, Arjun. Like the Krishna says. So Krishna clearly says, not only in 10.8 Gita, but 7.4 and 7.5 Bhagavad Gita, you can see that. Where he says that there's eight elements, Bhumi, Rapu, Anula, Vayu, Kam, Manaha, Buddhi, Rahankar, they all have come from me. Krishna says that. And then the spiritual world also has emanated from me, he says. So, this is actually the, uh, the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Which one? Uh, this one. Okay. So, uh, see, in the 15th chapter also it says, Dama Vishya Chabhutani Dharayami Ahamo Jasa Dharayami means, see, Dharana means like this to hold is called Dhara. Dharana. Dharayami means I hold all the planets in their orbit by my energy, he says. By my energy. Like, for example, by by electrical energy, I can make the fan rotate, correct? No. By electrical energy, I can switch on the lights. Even with electrical energy, we can cool the objects in the fridge or we can heat also, heat the heat pump. 
with one energy we can do 2000 applications correct no <clears throat> so it's not a new thing for us you can also use energy and, and transform energy also you can convert you know electrical energy into kinetic energy you, know? you can convert chemical energy into heat energy so you have the even we do that we are converting similarly he says that by my energy i am keeping all the planets in orbit he says now we may say no 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 we have found out g m1 m2 by r square you know that uh, attraction between the planets that is keeping them you know in the orbit hmm. again the next question we we will talk about anything so the next question is who created that attraction like you know newton asked the question when apple fell on his head he said why should the apple come down why can't it fly up that was his intelligent question he asked and then he came up with the you know uh, gravitational pull 9.8 which is a nice thing now even more intelligent question than that is you know who made the apple because apple falling comes later <laughs> who made such a wonderful apple with such a nice juice isn't it so that would be even more intelligent question so here he says that uh, all the planets are revolving in orbit uh, by my energy i put them in orbit he says that I enter into each planet, and my by my energy they stay in orbit. He says. In the Bhagavad Gita, seventh chapter, Krishna says, the essence of everything in this world is God. Him. He says that. For example, what is the essence of a fan? When he asked some students, what is the essence of this? The essence is to rotate. He said, rotating is not the essence. To give air is the essence of a fan. Similarly, tube light or whatever light means to give light. is the essence of light everything has some essential thing for which we approach them like if i ask you can you please give me a bisleri bottle you know imagine you come and give me an empty bottle i will say no no not empty bottle i want water <laughs> because essence of bisleri bottle is drinking water correct no similarly in this world essence of anything if you remove it and that entity has no meaning at all so he says is the essence of everything god is the essence of everything in this world which means see here he says i am the taste of water and then he says i am the light of the sun prabhasmi shashi surya yo i am the source of the light of the sun and the light of the moon also both he says i am the light of the sun and light of the moon 1.8 bhagavad gita i am the moon in the vedas pranava sarva vedeshu says and then he saying Balam balavatam cha hum kam arag pe barjitam. He says, "I am the strength of the strong." He says, and he says, "Buddhir buddhi matamas me dejas dejas vinama." He says, "Einstein didn't create his own brain. Krishna God gave him the brain for all of us. For Newton or Einstein. So he Krishna says that I am the buddhi of the buddhiman. I am the intelligence of the intelligent." He says that. so when we observe the universe around us you can see if somebody wants to really find out this god it is there are various ways there are more than a dozen ways you can establish the presence of a supreme being there is a henological approach there is a teleological approach there is a cosmological approach there is a ontological approach i think there are various approaches we will see the teleological which is the design intelligent design based approach so so when we look at the world around as it was said cosmos the word cosmos if you go to oxford dictionary it says uh, it's a beautiful uh, an orderly and harmonious universe and how is it we will see now today so these are our observation you will see i have put it in a very easy to remember format say a b c d e f is it remember a for artistry b for beautiful organization C for creation implies creator, design implies designer, energy implies energetic, and flawless laws implies a flawless lawmaker. So each of it will be explained in the subsequent slides now. So I put it in A B C D E F format so we can remember easily. So you all will remember A for artist, B for beautiful organizer, C for creator, D for designer, E for it like that. Okay, let us see the artistry. If you see these pictures, these are all famous ones. Leonardo da Vinci drew this Mona Lisa. So 
you see, whenever you put a painting, below that you put the name of the painter also. Correct, no? Who has done it. So that is the masterpiece or the brainchild of somebody. See, all these artist names are mentioned. What about artists of this? Who made the beauty in this world? The, the beauty of the mountains, the beauty of the sunrise, the beauty of the sunset, beauty of the Grand Canyon, beauty of the Niagara waterfalls, or beauty of the roses. You know, how can anyone say that these beauties have come on their own by chance and then Mona Lisa and other things are drawn by man, isn't it? Does it make any sense? Look at this. Here is a paper rose. See, if you want to make a paper rose like this, you know, you need a scissor, you need some canvas or paper, you need the paint, watercolor to make the rose one and the green one and all that. After doing all these things, you need some special intelligence to turn the paper this way, that way, which they teach us in our craftsman classes, correct? No? The schools, how to cut the paper and make the rose. Not anybody can make a rose. It also requires some talent. And even after you do this rose, it will not have any fragrance. It will not have the tenderness. It's going to be rough. And rather than think of the real rose. So who made the real rose? Because the real rose has fragrance. It has tenderness. You put it under electron microscope, you will see protoplasm, cytoplasm, nucleus, all those details. And also every plant has specific type of leaf also. The, the shape of the leaf. So, so once you think about the delicateness, the biological complexity, fragrance and the shapes and forms and all these things. So what am I trying to do here? We are comparing man-made things to the God-made things. When it comes to man-made things, man, you know, beats on his chest and says, we made it. You know? Like they always put in the products made in Japan, <laughs> correct? No? Made in this country, made in that country. And when it is made by God, they will never recognize. You know? There was one article I read, God did first. That was the article. The article said, um, man is a very good imitator or a very good uh, copycat. You know? How? For example, God made the birds. You know, the birds fly with their wings. Man observed the birds and he found out the law of buoyancy, which we study in our law of flotation of buoyancy. Like, you know, if you have a, uh, a plate like this, so the lift and drag principle, you know, lift is the vertical and the drag is the horizontal. So man studied it. And then the hydraulics, we study, we study these things. Based on that, he designed the aeroplane by propelling, correct? No? So he learned from God how the bird flies. In the same manner, you know, the honeycomb principle is used in our um, air cooled engines, which you see from honeycomb, they have learned how to cool, how the honeybees are cooling their uh, honeycomb. And also the bridges which are made, like Howrah Bridge, if you see, how the Howrah Bridge in uh, Calcutta is made. It's considered one of the marvels if you go today. You know, there are very less support. That is made from the, the leg of a human being, how God has made it. Based on that, he has learned how to bring stability. So there are many things man observes God's creation and then he copies it. Subsequently, he copies it. Just like this paper rose. <laughs> Isn't it? Therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, if one man is mimicking like a dog, for example, big crowd will go to watch him. But God has created million dogs, nobody talks about it. Isn't it? Mm. So behind the artistry, that's an artist. That's the first one. See, this is honeybees. Bees are called social insects you can because hear they live and work together as a community. Thousands of female bees, called worker bees, together in a hive with a queen bee. The queen bee was marked with a red dot, so we can see her better. The worker bees are all females, but they almost never lay eggs. Worker bees do almost all the chores in a hive. They gather pollen or nectar. No dangerous. Clean the hive. Build the home. Make money. Tend the queen. 
and to feed the hungry. They even fanned the hive with their wings to keep it cool on a hot summer day. <laughs> See what are they doing? If you are amazed, isn't it? What are they doing? You can see that. Huh? But the honeybees, huh? not ordinary thing. They are, they are uh, trained in so many things. They build the honeycomb. They fan the honeycomb and they also tend to the queen bee, which is always the red patch behind. And the worker bees actually go and collect honey and bring, and the queen bee is sitting. So it's like a beautiful factory, isn't it? In the factory. Even in factory, you have strike, they never go on strike. It's so organized, you will see that. It's organization of the honey bee. We'll see one more. Mathematician spiders. Compared to their own sizes, spiders build very large webs. Indeed, if we enlarged a spider to the size of a human being, the length of the web it weaves would be approximately 150 meters, which corresponds to a 50 story skyscraper. Is it possible for a human being to be able to work the size of the 50 story skyscraper in only an hour? But a tiny spider accomplishes much more than that. Moreover, the spider on the web is the sturdiest material in the world. How do spiders leave these webs possessing miraculous features? The spider takes into consideration many factors will be a web, hundreds of times larger than its own size. This task demands at least some calculations, essentially constructing a building. For the accomplishment of this work, first the spider must draw a project like an architect for a construction of this size, design, and sturdiness cannot be accomplished without an architectural project. Once the project is drawn, the spider must calculate the lifting capacity of each part of the web like an engineer, otherwise the web cannot remain suspended. In order to design such a web and make such delicate calculations, the spider must be more qualified than a college graduate. Indeed, <laughs> there is not a university that provides education in the offspring. Following their birth, they begin to produce so we web. <laughs> yes, sir. This is such a, how long is that? The, it, the, this thing it weaves. It was very, very long, isn't it? A kind of very complex uh, spider as well. So, I only showed you a couple of ones. I have many more actually. I have five more I have. I'm not showing you. So, beautiful organization in place and organizer. First, I told you about artistry, then, I told you about organizer. Huh? So the, even uh, let us also compare it with uh, what wonderful things man has created. For example, when you talk about a sleek car, then someone has manufactured it, isn't it? Uh, or you talk about trendy computers, someone has assembled it. Elegant watches, someone has designed it. Architectural marvels, someone has erected such marvel. Skyscrapers, someone has built it. And these are all wonderful. We don't say they are not wonderful, they are wonderful. But behind it, there's a human intelligence, isn't it? And the sculptures, someone has carved it. The children in this universe also have a super intelligent creator to do those kind of creations. Like sometimes you see 200 story building or whatever, touching on Moses' skies. So uh, certainly behind it, every creation, there's a creator. You know, even a Renault spend doesn't come on its own. Even a chapati from the kitchen doesn't come on its own. Everything as a creator. See, anything in this creation you see, <clears throat> two things you can say about it. One is, it should have a creator, it should have a purpose also. Imagine you go to your uh, <clears throat> strength of materials laboratory, that's a universal testing machine. You ask the lab man, what is, where is this machine from and what is its purpose? The man says this machine came out of nothing and does no purpose. It is simply ridiculous. Because the machine might have come from Germany, and the purpose is to test the strength of materials, correct? Right? No. It has some purpose always. Similarly, each of this creation you will see, it has a purpose. It has intelligent creator. So that's a creation implies a creator. 
See, this is a small seed, a sequoia tree. It is, it is shown with a scale. How many centimeters you feel it is? It is 1.5 centimeters, is it? Correct? Yeah, that's 1.5 centimeters, 15 millimeter. You know, it's, uh, it's not even one inch. One inch is 2.5. One inch is uh, that much. It's half of one inch, almost half. <laughs> this is the size of the sequoia seed. But just wait and watch what comes out of, out of the seed. When you sow it in the ground, from one sequoia seed, this is a tree which comes out. How big is the tree, you want to know? See, this is the world's largest tree. It's called giant sequoia, they call it. It is 84 meters high, 275 feet high, and 95 feet in diameter. So to embrace this tree, you need a minimum 15 people. That is the bottom of the tree. Not only that, a car can go inside, see a big van can go make a hole in the tree. And this giant tree is packaged in a tiny seed, which I showed you just now. Is it not a marvel? No? You know, when man does something, people admire it. Like, for example, if, a, if man has made the CD ROM, in one small CD ROM can put some 50,000 songs. It's a small silicon chip or something. Man says, wow, what a great innovation. We put a, or a pumped up computer or something like that. But what about God's marvel? Making a seed in which you can accommodate a 300 feet high tree. You know? Yeah. Do we have any experience of man making such a thing? Think about it. You make a seed inside which you can put such a big tree. You see, it's actually taller than <laughs> Statue of Liberty also. You see here. Yeah. You can compare this to uh, human brain and the computer. Here you see, you see Richard, what he says. Human brain can store more information than all the libraries in the world, he says. That much ability is there in the human brain. So who has designed this? <laughs>
you can see that and diamond diamond is number 10 on most scale hardest whereas graphite is a carbon if you see it can be broken it can be broken <laughs> it's like coal coal you've seen that you can just break it and they both belong to the same family you can see that and how from graphite diamond can come although coal is so soft uh, slight molecular change makes it diamond that's why you'll find the molecular uh, uh, design by slight change even the odor changes the color changes completely you know? and here we showed the hardness changes so much so that means the meticulous design in the microwave that's the point such a precise uh, such a delicate design see i was asking a question to one of the computer science students uh, this sleek computer we have what he calls it my macbook i think is it macbook yeah so i asked him okay one company has made this macbook why can't other computer company just copy it so he said it cannot be copied he said you know there is a r and d team which designs it and uh, after designing the whole thing after making the computer they will lock it in such a way that nobody can uh, copy it nobody can uh, what do you call it imitate that if all companies can imitate everybody will make sleek computers correct no why only some people are able to make such sleek computers with such precision and everything no? so that means you know amongst humans also there are people with finer and finer intelligence no? stronger uh, very powerful intelligence and they come up with new new innovations and when when we look at the nature god's creation is far more meticulous which even finest of the human intelligence will admire it also mm-hmm. that kind of meticulousness is found here mm-hmm. like if you see a satellite communication based on which we all are talking on mobiles mm-hmm. so do you think just you throw a satellite up in the air and then you can talk on phone <laughs> it's not such an easy thing you will see that satellite is um, a man word by a team yeah, with control room that's why they take charges from you huh? because they need a control uh, team managing everything and these are the parameters they have to take care see orientation spin velocity and all these different things <laughs> for maintaining the satellite so we put a sputnik or a satellite in orbit and get our things done similarly god has put so many planets in orbit so how do you expect that it goes on its own see this is a satellite control room huh? you can see this yeah see this is a weight of earth 610 to 10 to the power of 21 metric tons yeah this is speed around the sun the earth revolves in 365.256 days it is so precise up to the third decimal you can set your watch based on its rotation so who is in control of keeping everything in orbit in my school days i learned that neptune is the ninth planet later on in one place i read that neptune sometimes goes between saturn and uranus you know that later on i found the orbits are all not like concentric when the neptune is going it goes sometimes between the two planets seventh and eighth also and then again becomes ninth but you never hear of a clash or in then in an accident you don't hear because there's a perfect control <laughs> is this question who is control nasa is controlling all the planets that's a question yeah. so this is another amazing thing you will see this In 1200 AD, a man named Leonard Pisano, better known as Fibonacci, discovered a sequence of numbers that created a very interesting pattern. The sequence begins with the numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and continues indefinitely. Each number is obtained by adding the last two digits together. A rectangle with a length and width of any two of the numbers of this sequence forms what is known as the golden rectangle, a perfect rectangle. 
A golden rectangle can be broken down into squares the size of the next Fibonacci numbers down and below. If we were to take a perfect or golden rectangle, break it down into smaller squares based on Fibonacci sequence, and divide each with an arc, the patterns begin to take shape. We begin to see Fibonacci's spiral. The spiral in and of itself is insignificant. Its importance is revealed in where we find it. Take for example the sunflower. The display of its florets are in perfect spirals of 55, 34, and 21. The sequence of Fibonacci. The fruitlets of the pineapple create the same spiral based on the sequence. The pine cone does the same. As currents move through the ocean, and the tide rolls onto the shore, the waves that bring in the tide curve into a spiral that can be mathematically diagrammed onto a plot at the points 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Buds on trees, sand dollars, starfish, petals on flowers, and especially the nautilus shell are formed with this exact same blueprint. With each segment of growth, the Nautilus adds to itself one more value on Fibonacci's scale. This blueprint can be seen around us on a small scale every day, but the greatest example of all is directly above our heads. At an average of 100,000 light years across, even the spiral of the galaxies above us are formed with the exact design that the tiny shell is formed. This sequence, our blueprint, appears to be the trademark of a designer, a proof of a creator, something left behind, indicating the one who was there, a fingerprint. As we scan our universe, from the tiny flower to the awe-inspiring galaxy, we see the fingerprint of God. You know, you understood, no? See, it is not just in one or two things. Anybody remembers? Where all this Fibonacci's uh, uh, Archimedean spiral count is observable? Few examples he said. You remember? You remember one of them? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple. Uh, sunflowers. Galaxy. Yeah. And even fingers. This also fingers also. You can imagine. So he calls it a God's signature. God has put a signature in nature. Wherever he. Uh, he had to use the spiral, he has used the same calculation. So that the design becomes evident. There is one book called as Evidence of God in an Expanding Universe. 88 scientists wrote that book together. And each scientist says from his uh, point of view, how there is a creator beyond it, based on chemistry or biology or physics or different fields like that. So design implies a designer so we talked about the design of the brain uh, we talked about the, uh, the fibonacci uh, you know equation you know, like that we showed you many designs we showed it. This is the way to stand. <laughs> you saw the size of the earth, you saw that. Actually, I, I don't know whether you noticed that. See the, see the size of the earth, you will see that now. That's all minute. <laughs> See this there, this one is this is one. See that small one, you saw no? See that the earth one you are seeing that how small it is. So 14 lakh earths can be put inside the sun. 1400,000. Huh? That many earths can be according to scientists. So 1400,000 earths can be put inside. And our earth itself is so big. Huh? And you can imagine 14 lakh earths can be put inside the sun. And the sun is 93,000 uh, million miles away. Huh? And uh, they are saying it's, run, it's moving at a speed of 16,000 miles in one second. If you just twitch your finger, 16,000 miles it moves. Such a heavy object. Even Jupiter and the Saturn are so small in front of the sun, you can see that. 
So, sun has a tremendous energy undoubtedly, uh, but in this world you will see that behind the energy there is always an energetic, you will see. Imagine if a stone comes flying into this room and hits the glass, uh, what is the first thing you will ask? Uh, who threw the stone? Uh, who loaded the stone? So, stone can only come flying only if somebody has loaded it with kinetic, kinetic energy, right? now. So, behind the energy there is energetic. So, that is the point here. Yeah. See, energy emanated by the sun per second is the amount of the amount of energy consumed by human race throughout the entire history. Yeah. That's what just now. <laughs> and who is supplying energy to the sun? There has to be energetic. Energy implies energetic. That's the point here. Yeah. Like you all might have heard about uh, uh, the perpetual motion machine, you know, thermodynamics we study, PMM. That is actually a hypothetical thing. There is nothing like nobody has made a PMM. It is only in a paper. See, PMM means it doesn't take any input, but it keeps on giving output, correct? No? That is PMM, perpetual motion machine. Hmm. Now, sun appears like that, correct? No? Sun keeps on. Is anybody supplying fuel to the sun? You know, and you see that uh, it's called Ashesha Teja. There's a verse which says this. Yachakshuresha Savita Sakalagrahana Raja Samastha Suramurti Rashesha Teja Yasyagya Pramati Samrita Kala Chakro Purusham Tamaham Bajami. So, if we see the movement of the sun, while going up it moves slowly, and while in the return orbit when it comes, comes fastly. That means the rate at which it's moving is also not constant. It is very, that means somebody is varying it. Right now, if it is constant, it is going at the same speed, you may think automatic. The rate is changing. While going up, it goes slow. While coming, it comes fast. So you will read in the fourth canto of Shrimad Bhagavatam. You will read. So he says here, Ashesha Teja means the sun has uh, uh, an inexhaustible amount of energy it is giving out hmm. continuously. So and it is all for all the grahas, it is giving light and it is giving us heat and energy. Yeah, that's why there is an energetic Govinda, a Lord, who is giving the sun that energy, hmm. heat energy. He says. Okay, now let us look at the world around us. Now we are coming to our observation also. Okay. Like, you know, you have to go to college at 9.30 a.m. The bell rings or whatever. You have to put your attendance, right? So, there's a law in the college or the school. So, who made the law? Principal made the law, correct? Right? Similarly, in India, you keep your car to the left. In America, you keep your car to the right, I told you, isn't it? So there is a law that's made by the government. The traffic police people have made the law. Similarly, if you want to play cricket, there are many laws you have to follow, isn't it? <laughs> How many players? You can't add two more players to your team. <laughs> you have to stick to the rule. And, and also how a batsman can be out uh, or it will be in. So there are rules for it. So who made the rules? And touch cricket council, they have made the rules. So one has to stick to it if you want to play the game. Similarly, we call it as a mandatory periodic chance or mandatory periodic uh, law, we call it. What do you call it? It's a periodic, uh, periodic. Uh, periodic table. We call it as a periodic law, we call it. Uh, because it follows. We don't call it periodic chance. Uh. And these elements, 120 elements, each of them is very easily identifiable based on a configuration, correct? Like Bohr uh, gave that model 1s2, 2p6. You can write for all of them. So precisely we can write. Yeah. Similarly, in physics also you find the, there's a loss of motion yeah. and there's loss, law of reflect, reflection, refraction. Yeah. There are definite laws. 
even insensible matter follows a definite pattern otherwise how are we able to you know put it in parabolic behavior or hyperbolic behavior or you know exponential behavior linear how uh, i mean even insensible matter also follows definite laws you can see that hmm. that means they are designed to behave in a certain way like for example when you handle insensible matter for example you handle it in such a way that it will be organized for your convenience correct no hmm. you will see that for example you design your socks in a certain way design your shoe in a certain way design your dress in a certain way huh? you design your table in a certain way you actually design the dead things according to the way you will find it comfortable like chair why is this handle here there's a reason or no reason there's a reason i find it more comfortable you know earlier man designed the chair without it now our chair is sitting without the handle there it's tolerating sitting if you give him a chair with handle it be more happy correct no so because man doesn't design dead matter without a purpose in the same manner in this world also insensible matter also is designed by god in such a way that it follows a definite law that's the point you will see that the micro world macro world precise laws are governing it okay i, I will give you on homework which you can do when you go back today you can put uh, in google search cosmic eye you can put cosmic c o s m i c e y e cosmic eye you can put it and there they will show you micro world and macro world both they will show you they go down 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 microscopically then they go big 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 microscopically you know? and they are showing that man has very little control over micro and macro worlds yeah. and uh, and also they are showing how accurate and the micro and macro world is you will see that so flawless laws i showed you now they definitely imply a law maker actually there are no laws in this world without a law maker in your company the siren blows at a certain time when you have to go to company and punch the card isn't it it's made by somebody any law like for playing carrom for playing chess playing cricket there are definite laws so wherever you find law there is a law maker so the world is full of laws there is a like we showed you thermodynamics and physics and, and chemical laws and mathematical laws that implies a law maker in the same manner you know somebody is beautiful somebody is ugly somebody is handsome somebody is not handsome somebody is thinking rich somebody is pop district somebody is md doctor somebody is a bully so you find disparity in society the question comes who decides <laughs> who will be who correct now see given an opportunity any of you if i ask you would you be would you like to be educated or illiterate you would prefer to be educated you would you like to be handsome or ugly you naturally prefer to be handsome would you like to be a uh, you know son of a son or daughter of a billionaire or a beggar naturally you would say billionaire correct now so we may choose but here we find Uh, these choices are not given to us we are awarded you are made to be born in a certain family you are given parents like it will be shown here if you see we choose our education our job husband or wife spouse these things we choose we choose our car these are in our hands we choose and we may choose an apartment also which type of apartment you want 2 bhk 3 bhk row house or independent bungalow you choose we don't choose our parents we are born in a certain family suddenly we find that this is my mother this is my father <laughs> you didn't choose it you, you get it similarly so face cut also you didn't choose uh, actually some people would like to have certain type of face cut but they don't have it but we didn't choose our face cut it was, it was awarded to us similarly our intelligence also you will find there are people more intelligent than us there are people less intelligent than us you will always find we have, we have a certain level of intelligence iq as we call it so in fact nowadays there are mock tests which will tell you whether you should try for iit je or not or you should go for cet or iit je they will tell you in advance only in, in 8 9 100 only they'll tell you whether it is good for you to go or not and how are they able to say because everybody's uh, body and intelligence is like a particular model car 
like Maruti car or a Benz car or a Lamborghini or whatever. It's like a particular model car. So every car has different speed. Similarly, everybody's intelligence is different speed. Similarly, some people are born handsome, right? On the other hand, there are people trying to be handsome, you know, in order to change the pigment of their skin color, they put fire and lovely and all the so many things they try. Or somebody is short, they put a very high heel. <laughs> they try. But you can try, but nothing like what naturally comes. You agree? Mm -hmm. That means uh, these are all awarded to us. We don't have choice. Now the question is, who chooses it for me? And on what basis? Somebody can be angry with God. Why did they give me an ugly face? Or, or why did you uh, make me an illiterate? Is it by chance? Uh, this is the point here, you see. In the world of physics and chemistry, thermodynamics, there are definite laws. Everywhere there are definite laws. Then we can ask a question, how can our birth, beauty, intelligence only be random events? Uh, they also must be based on some law. And what is that law? We will hear about it in the next session. It is law of karma. karma. Correct. That's the law actually, yeah. Karmanadaivanetrena jantur deho papartaye Striya pravishta udaram pumsoreta kanashreha. Bhagavatam says that under the supervision of the Supreme Lord, and according to the result of our own work, the living entity, the soul, is made to enter into the womb of a woman through the particle of a male semen to assume a particular type of body. In this way, we all are awarded the results of our own past actions. Just like a company awards you salary package at the end of the month. And they may give you incentives if you have done good work. You know? Like that, the bodies and the intelligence are awarded to us from Purva Janma Karma. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, God is a flawless lawmaker. Mm -hmm. So now we have gone through all these things. You know? So now let us see scientist observation. We will see what scientists are saying. One one of you can read it. You have the mic with you. Yeah. Where's the mic with you? Yeah. Different scientists, yeah. I'll give it. Gopal want to read, huh? Gopal read. <laughs> He'll begin it. There is a perfect brain behind all the natural physical laws. Albert Einstein. Yeah. This is a very big one, Schrodinger. Basically, Schrodinger, what he says, actually, no, something very important he talks. Maybe it, although it's very big, it's worth reading it. I can see this. The, uh, yeah. I'm very convinced that the scientific picture of the real world around me is very deficient. Deficient, he says. Why science is deficient, he says. Yeah. Deficient. It gives a lot of factual information, puts all of our experience in a magnanimous. In a magnificently consistent order. Consistent order where the astral science about all and sundry. Sundry that is really near to our heart that really matters to us. See what he's saying. There are two things. There are two things in this world. Uh, one is about the technical information about things in the world. Another thing is those things are very near and dear to our hearts. For example the beauty of a painting, you know, the uh, fragrance of a flower, the taste of the eatables, the sweetness, sweet sound of the music, you know, and the affection we feel for parents or for the spouse or for the children. These are all very near and dear to our hearts. But science remains silent in these things. They have no information. They only talk about technical things. You know. Like they talk about the linear, rotary measurements, and they talk about the, you know applications and appliances uh, based on the pure science. Pure science does the research, and then the application comes out as technology. You know? You'll see that. So those things uh, may add some commodities to our life, but he is saying that they don't answer anything about what is near and dear to our heart. Like that he is saying. Go ahead. It cannot tell us. It cannot tell us a word. It cannot tell us a word about red and blue, bitter and sweet, physical pain and physical delight. It knows nothing of beautiful and ugly, good or bad, God and eternity. Science sometimes pretends 
<laughs> he's saying they're often so silly he says they're often so silly he says because uh, actually if you try to you know, use science for these real life things it will be ridiculous like i told you yesterday you know what is the scientific understanding of a gulab jamun you can say what is the porosity of gulab jamun what is the size of the ball what is the viscosity of the liquid and all that they will give you a big technical data which is useless for you you just pop up a blood down your mouth you will know what it is yeah that's what he's saying starting earlier yeah who yeah. else yeah you would be forced by science to read a novel yeah that is by lord kelvin yeah so once uh, newton had uh, made a gyroscope you know a gyroscope um, he made a gyroscope means like a solar system kind of equipment kind of thing he had a crankshaft if you rotate it then the all the you know planets will rotate that kind of thing he had made so one of his friends came and asked him hey wow this is very amazing you have made the movements of the planets precisely like the way they move in the actual solar system how did you make it who made it for you can i also get this done from somebody so newton very coolly told him no it came by chance he told him and his friend said hey don't uh, make fun out of me some carpenter somebody must have made it tell me who made it and then newton asked him a question if you can't believe that this cannot you say it cannot come by chance but how do you think the real thing must have come by chance like they asked him a question so newton was very thoroughly honest see what he says here did it somebody where is the mic with you you can give it to this most beautiful system of sun planets is it on is the mic on yeah yeah it um, only proceed from the council and the minions minions of intelligence and powerful being this being governs all things not as the soul of the world but as lord overall and on account of his dominion he is to be called lord of all universal rule like yeah see this is as i said newton so one thing becomes very clear many of the scientists actually had admiration for god as a very intelligent designer creator and uh, one who has dominion over all but uh, down the line in the 18th century you will find uh, dawkins see even darwin for example 1869 1859 correct na 1859 when he wrote the origin of species in that he writes that the uh, you know uh, the originally the living beings must have been created by uh, a few living beings by the absolute creator like that he says and then he went on to talk about evolution uh, and not talk about further evolution but darkens when he came so he was a die hard atheist he said why are you bringing god in you know why do you give any room for god let us come with one spontaneous generation theory uh, so he said that wasn't primordial so you uh, know the cosmic rays would evaporate the living forms can't come and if it is inside the ocean water it will undergo depolymerization so uh, don't ask me what happened some or other it didn't undergo polymerization by the cosmic i mean it didn't so he goes on five steps in each of the step it is failing and then in his preface of his book dawkins road this book should be read as if it is a sci-fi book like that he writes he is making a fun out of his work saying that it's like a sci-fi book but he is presenting it as a theory also so you find down the line some other scientists felt that let us shelf god aside and put ourselves in god's place that's what you find over there over there yeah did it i saw in it the atom the key to the deepest secret of nature and it revealed to me the greatest the greatness of the creation and the creator yeah any equation for me has no meaning unless it has it represents a thought of god yeah this is a mathematical genius actually when ramar when he was a boy in south india he used to write in black slate you know many differential equations and he would wipe it with his hand and again he would write again he would wipe it and write keep on writing so one of his friends observed it and said hey you are writing very complex equations why are you rubbing it please put it in a notebook 
So then he started writing them in a notebook. So later on, some teacher noticed that, that these are very, very difficult to understand complex differential equations he's writing at such a young age. So somehow from the teacher, it went here, there, at last it reached the hands of Gauss. You know? In mathematics, you must have heard about Gauss, you know? G-A-U-S-S. So when he saw, he was thrilled that he said that I have been having some inquiries in maths and this fellow from India is writing answers to that. So immediately Ramarajan was called abroad. Then when Ramarajan came, then people under his genius became open to the whole world after that. So he could give direction in mathematics in areas which were practically unknown to many, many big mathematicians of his times. So he was like a born genius, empowered by God. And this is what he says, unless it represents the thought of God, I cannot think of an equation. Yeah, this is Heisenberg. You know Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, right? Yeah, what he says. There is a higher power not influenced by our wishes, which finally decides and guides. Yeah, it's a higher power, our God, you know, which influences our lives. Sorry. Yeah. Michael Faraday, famous one, who invented LSD. Ah, yeah, please get it. Are you also writing the privilege of knowing God's truth far beyond anything we have heard? Yeah. So he's saying we ought to value the privilege of knowing God's truth beyond everything. Else. That means, you know, which is you can you can be fond of mathematics. You can be fond of uh, computer science or coding and everything, but you should not fail to learn about God. That knowledge is topmost knowledge, Raja Vidya, Brahma Vidya, do not neglect it. That's his point. So these are the scientists I showed you now. I purposely took quotes from very prom prominent scientists who are well known. And we can take many more. Yeah. And each of them have very profound quotes we write just now. After hearing all these things, what okay. Gopal will answer. Gopal, you want to try? Come <laughs> on, What is origin of the universe? Big bang or big band or intelligent design or chance? <laughs> intelligent design. Let us see the answer. Allah, we give him an applause. Okay, then one more question. We we'll ask that boy, what's your good name? Vibe. Vibe? Vibe. Okay, you can answer now. Huh? What is the purpose of this universe? Huh? Eat, sleep, and be merry, or make money and pass away, or no purpose, or to understand God and life. Give him an applause. Actually, suppose you give him one one crore rupees now. It's two crore rupees here. So, this is what I told you. Any machine, computer, building, even a pen or a pencil as a maker and a designer. Yeah. And our universe is far more complex and awesome universe. It has to have a designer and producer. That's the whole point. See, in the Encyclopedia Britannica, there's a statement here. You can see that. You can read that. Now, this I already told you. Okay. Sorry, this one. See, encyclopedia, what it says. We should emphasize that no theory of origin of solar system has as yet one general acceptance, he says. All involves highly improbable assumptions. Actually, you know, there is one uh, scientist recently, just a few months ago, uh, he was very powerfully presented uh, uh, counter evidence for Darwin's theory. I can, I can give you the link there. I can share the link with Omkar Prabhu, Rahul Prabhu, Omkar Prabhu. You can remind me and then you can share it with others. Yes. 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 Y
more than five minutes, I think, probably. Yeah. So you can make a comparison between our government of your country and the universal government. Okay. Now you see the one example. Okay. We have a home ministry in our country, correct? In God's uh, universe, what is the home ministry for law and order and punishment? Is there a punishment for the evil mongers and evil doers or no punishment? Yes. yes. Example? No. Example for law and order. No. He is saying birth itself. Birth and death itself is one punishment. Is it? Okay. And also in this universe, for the wrong doers, is that punishment kept by God or no punishment? But what are the yeah? natural calamities? Natural okay. Yes. Like the people are killing millions of cows, aborting millions of children, and therefore there is you know natural calamity. Here I give a simple example. If you see, somebody does illicit sex, they get sexually transmitted diseases. Somebody indulges in smoking, they get cancer, drinking, they have problem, tobacco, they get ulcers. So you can see that these are all punishments kept. Uh, these are not man given. It's not given by man. Is it government gives, for example, if you smoke, government gives you cancer? No. God has kept it. Correct, no? God has made that arrangement. Similarly, there is a positively, if you see, if you do pranayama or yoga asanas or meditation, you become healthier. That means there is a reward for the people who adopt the right type of life. Even all of you, you try vegetarian food and if you offer it to God and take it, it's very easy to digest. Salads, very simple foods. You eat junk food, it's very difficult to digest. It's called as fast food, but slow to digest. Isn't it? Yeah. So you can see that if you align with the scriptures, see, you see, man went for fertilized food and all that, but now he's coming back to organic. Correct now? Yeah. So the health ministry, is there arrangement made by God for those who are unhealthy? He has kept some medicines? Any medicines are kept in nature or no? What are they? Yes, Ayurvedic derivatives. Yeah, Ayurvedic herbs. There are thousands of herbs actually. If you read the book Charak Samhita, like ginger, you know, many, many turmeric. Yeah. Therefore, if you see our Ramdev Baba, for example, so there are thousands of virus. Okay, for electricity and lighting is provided by the government for the people of the country, correct? Similarly, is there an arrangement made for our lighting in this world? Or, yeah? Yes? Sun? Sun is like the daylight. And when you want to go to bed in the night, there's a night light also. Moonlight is a night light, correct. <laughs> so God gives you a dim light in the night so that you can go to sleep. If another sun comes, you will sit with the computer again. Isn't it? Yeah. So sun and moon. Yeah, isn't it? Okay, there's a finance ministry in every government. For currency or wealth, every government produces that. In God's creation, is there a something for currency? Currency or wealth? What is considered wealth in this in the in the universe? Yeah. Health. Yeah. Health. Good health. Health is wealth. Of course, health is for the body, but uh, what is what is considered equivalent to currency? Knowledge. Uh -huh. Okay, see, this is gold, silver, Navaratna, and diamonds. Uh, in fact, every country is only allowed to print the currency notes as much gold they have. Hmm. That is equal. <laughs> and defense ministry protects the people from dangers from the neighborhood countries. Similarly, for human beings and all the creatures, is there a provision made for protecting them? Around earth, there is one layer and the uh, ozone sphere. Uh, and also immunity in the body also. You, you cut to take a blade and cut your skin and that will dry up in two days, you will see that. Even without putting medicine also. Mm, you can see that it's because body has a natural immunity. Uh, that's also God's creation. And we have an education ministry to educate the citizens. In God's creation, is there a facility for getting educated and enlightened? Yeah. What is it? How? Yeah? Ah, religious text. Correct. Yeah. Vedas, Bible, Quran. You know, the literature is sent for us to become enlightened. So you will see that 
there is a national government, there is the universal government. Behind the national government, there is a prime minister, correct? No? Behind the universal government, there has to be a god. Otherwise, how all these arrangements are made? Think about it. So here are simple conclusions. Please read it, somebody. Where's the mic with you? Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Behind every government. Oh, you have the mic with you? Okay, yeah. There is a prime minister. I, we can't hear the sound actually. It's not working. You try in this mic. Behind mind. every government, yeah. there is a prime minister. And behind every universal government, there is one. Yeah. Second one. Prime minister maintains and controls the country. God maintains and controls the entire system. Simple, huh? Yeah. Government laws abider, the law abiders live happily and lawbreakers suffer behind the bond. Correct, now. So these are three derivations from what we did in this table now. You know, behind this world, like God can be caught as the operator of the cosmic machine. That's like Prime Minister is operating a country. So, please repeat this verse, famous version of Bhagavad Gita. Mata parada ramnan yat. Inchida sti dhananjaya. Mai sarvaminam protam. Sutre manigadaiva. Oh, you know, everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a necklace, he says. Just like if you see this Kantimala, if you see. All the monies are all together because there's a nylon thread. If I remove the nylon thread, what will happen? Everything will get scattered away. Like the Krishna says, I am that nylon thread which is keeping everything in order in this world, like the day says. Yeah. So the source of life and its symptoms, if we evolve from branches to benches, that's what man thinks, correct now? That we were actually, you know, primitive men long ago, and then, you know, from the apes, Gradually, man evolved. If you read a book called the Science Digest, one of the magazines says that this, this type of pictures they draw are mere fiction, he says. Because there are no intermediate links between one body and the next body. If you see in the Bhagavad Gita, what Krishna says, the metal body is a mere dress over the imperishable soul. Yesterday I told you. Metal body is dead matter, jada. It is temporary and perishable. And soul is real and is conscious, eternal, blissful personality. And they are a tiny part and parcel of God. So, yeah, Krishna says he is the source of all the living forms. And when Darwin talked about evolution, evolution certainly is happening. We don't say that's not it's not happening. But the evolution is not of the body, but of the soul. See so what Darwin is saying? There was a Luna. You pump the Luna, it became Maruti, like that he says. And then you uh, Maruti grew wings and started flying in the sky. That's what he says. Which means one body got changed into another body. You all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas what Krishna is saying is, there was one man riding a Maruti, he left the, I'm sorry, he was riding a Luna. He left the Luna by the side of the road and took a Maruti car. Then he left the Maruti, he got more money, he purchased the aeroplane. Then he had a chartered plane, that Krishna says. Which one makes sense? First one or second one? Second one, second one correct. The driver is changing the bodies. Not that one body is becoming another. Now I will show you evidence for this. You see, okay, this I will show you. See, about our ancestors, you know, according to the Dharma theory, your ancestors apes gradually evolved into primitive stone age men and finally most advanced modern men. Whereas Vedas say, your ancestors were socially, politically, religiously developed because originally Brahma, from Brahma had chapter rishis and down the line they were super intelligent people. Uh, I will give you one link called as Vedas and Science. Uh, you can leisurely go through it. Also, we can remember it, note down. Uh, it's, a, it's in my Google Drive. So if they see the link, thousands of evidences of how the Vedas are superior. You will get it in that drive, you will get it. In fact, they were speaking in Sanskrit, Sanskrit Bhasha, Deva Bhasha. In fact, Sanskrit is the mother of all languages. If you see Mata becomes mother, Pita becomes better in Latin, then it becomes father in English. Svastra becomes sister, Duhitra becomes daughter, Tattva in Sanskrit becomes Toto in English. It's simply copied from Sanskrit, you will see. And how can you consider the Vedic people to be cave dwellers? 
see what uh, Darwin writes in his letter in 19, 1857 says, I am believer that without speculation, there is no good or uh, original observation, he says. Therefore, I had to speculate, he says. Mm. Yeah, he speculated. So here, here is a classical example. He says, see, I have directly taken from his book. In North America, the black bear was seen swimming in for hours with wide open mouth, just catching like a whale, insects in water. Even in so extreme as case as this, if the supply of insects were constant, then the better adapted competitors did not already exist in the country. I can see no difficulty in the race of bears by natural selection, more and more aquatic in their structure and habits, with larger and larger mouths, till a creature was produced as monstrous as a whale, he said. That means from a bear, a whale came, he says. See, first of all, if the bear enters the water, see, remember this, the bear has hands and legs. It has to turn into, you know, uh, you know, uh, gills and fins, correct now? Gills for respiration and fins for steering. And how it happened, he's saying, the bear opened the mouth, ah, like they're catching the mosquitoes. And it became a whale, he says. See, this is directly taken from his book. Now you decide whether you want to believe or not. One more thing I will tell you. See, here he's saying, so under nature with a nascent giraffe, uh, the individuals which were the highest browsers and were able to, during deaths, to reach even an inch or two above others will often have to be, have been preserved. By this process, long continued, combined no doubt in the most important manner with inherited effects of increased use of the neck, neck parts. Uh, it seemed to me almost certain that any ordinary hoofed quadruped might have converted into a kira, he says. Now the question is, See, the, uh, the greenery in this uh, tree is going up, 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 correct now? Uh, therefore, he had to stretch his neck and get it. But the other giraffes, for example, those who couldn't reach, they can bend down and eat grass. You know, where they have an ego problem to bend down and eat the grass on the ground. Yeah. Is it difficult for them? For drinking water, anyway, they have to put their neck down. Can't they eat the grass? Do you think they will die? Poor giraffes are all lying dead because they couldn't stretch their neck. Ridiculous, isn't it? See, why I am bringing these things out to you? Educated masses are blind. They don't even challenge this bogus theory. Of course, now Darwin theory is gone. Now a new theory has come called snowball theory. And, uh, and the proponent of the theory says that the life didn't evolve on this planet. It evolved in another planet, he says. From there it has come here. Now he is pushing the problem from here to that. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So, on the other hand, if you see the Vedas, they say Annamaya, Pranamaya, Jnanamaya, Vijnanamaya, Anandamaya. There are five stages of uh, evolution of human consciousness, not just uh, external bodies. It is Annamaya means children, they just drink breast milk of the mother and they go to sleep. And Pranamaya means when they cross the age of 10, you will find they start running dynamically here and there. They compete in the school and then you compete in the office, then you compete in the business, that is Pranamaya. Look at the picture. How can I increase my dollar notes? How I can control the globe? This is the mentality in Pranamaya. So uh, survival of the fittest means Pranamaya, nothing beyond that. So Darwin doesn't know anything beyond Pranamaya. And beyond Pranamaya is Jnanamaya, you see. One appreciates the subtle interactions of the mind, intelligence, emotions, and aesthetics, uh, subtle. And then in Vijnanamaya, one understands I am not the body, I am soul. And in Anandamaya, <coughs> one understands I am soul, but God is super soul. And the loving relationship between me and God, that is ultimate. And one who awakens that love, it's called love agape, we call it. That love agape means universal love. Then you love all creatures, the children of God also. So he has no knowledge of these things, nor has he talked anything about it. He stopped with pranamaya only. Survival of the fittest, that's all he knows. If you see here, uh, the anandamaya, as it uh, told, uh, if you read Bhagavad Gita, you will learn anandamaya. We learn more knowledge about those things. So, in 1859, he said, right now, all the fossils are not excavated, so I am not sure, he said. But 20 million fossils were excavated even before Darwin died. They showed him the evidence that the organisms are not coming unicellular to multicellular, as he anticipated. They found out that millions of years ago, both man and monkeys have coexisted. Now there are evidences, millions. It's not that only 10,000 years before 
you know, growth environment, homo sapiens, sapiens, all of them. See, so if you all want to know more about these things, you can read this, see this book, Hidden History. You can go to the Google, you write the name of the book, Hidden History of Human Race, Darwin on Trial, uh, Forbidden Archaeology, Darwin's Doubt, Human Devolution. Uh, why human devolution, he says? Because sages were very intelligent. We have become devolved now, not evolved. Uh, and this is a very beautiful book, Nature's IQ, Extraordinary Animal Behaviors That Defy Evolution. Uh, so there are many books in the market, you can read them and understand. So I'm concluding in the last part. What is the goal of life? No, contemporary world where people say money, 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 money is honey. Just make a lot of money and enjoy life. Eat, drink and be merry. That is contemporary world view. But what the Vedas are saying, the goal of life is to realize self and God. Uh, the mental comforts and pleasures are insignificant. They can't make you happy truly. Simply accumulating goods won't make you happy. The soul has to revive his consciousness of God with love. Uh, see, this is the modern day society. Uh, uh, when we forget God, we become mad after this glitter and glamour and we suffer in this world. So Krishna is uh, giving the wisdom in Bhagavad Gita, which you will learn more in the uh, tomorrow session. Uh, so I, I'm showing you four duties as yes, call for action. Uh, you can remember these four duties. Each of it I'm showing in one month's life for you. Okay. So remember these four duties. You all are educated people. The first duty is this one. Use our intelligence to appreciate the great creation of God. Look at the nature around and marvel his creation and appreciate them. And tell people how beautifully he has created the daylight, the sunlight, and the nightlight, the moonlight. He has made the rainbow, he has made the waterfalls, he has made the colorful flowers and such delicate things. So you, you should be amazed and put into wonderment by his creation. That's the first thing. Second thing, 1200 AD, a man named Leonardo yes, Pisano, then known as Fibonacci, discovered a secret. This is our Termites. Termites live in colonies made up of millions of individuals. Termites. They work together so harmoniously that the whole colony functions like a single body, a single creature. These are worker termites. They are blind and deaf. They are blind and deaf also. As you can see, they mix pieces of earth with a special plaster and widen the walls of their nest. God has given these creatures which behave like the cells of a single body, different bodily structures for different jobs. Workers are born with the necessary tools for construction on their bodies. As you are now seeing, soldier termites are equipped with heavy weapons. Termites grow fungi in underground storerooms down in the depths of their nests. So like this. We can show that. And the third one, third one is to understand and explain the purpose of Lord's creation, which is love God and love all. This is the professor Leela Purushottam Prabhu from IIT Kanpur. Currently, he has become a director of uh, IIT Mandi also recently. So he's a very famous uh, Krishna conscious preacher. He comes to MIT USA to speak on artificial intelligence. Here he comes regularly here. So and he is a very expert on Bhagavad Gita also. So in this way, all of you also, as, as uh, uh, belonging to some of the best colleges here in Boston, you can understand and explain the purpose of Lord's creation because you have a, you can have a blend of knowledge of science on one hand and Bhagavad Gita on the other hand. Correct? No? Yeah. And lastly, fourth one, utilize everything for the pressure of God and welfare of, of all. Like, for example, we can use the printing machine for, instead of printing cinema magazines, we can print Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. Uh, similarly, we can use aeroplanes to travel and propagate the message of God. We can use all the scientific, uh, you know, utilities in 
in uh, propagating the sublime pure message of God, correct? No? That is the point. So this is the summary of today what we did. Thank you. I'm sorry we went a little late today because we had to start later. If, uh, actually, 6.30, if we start, we can finish by 8. But I think by then we start, we can 6.50 or 6.55 today. We can a little late today. Yeah. So it was interesting today. Yeah. So I told you, you know, we are not all in all. There is a God in control, it was, isn't it? So it was established very systematically. You'll remember this A, B, C, D, E, F. A for artist and B for beautiful organizer. C for G for E for energetic lord behind the energy and uh, F for flawless lawmaker. Yeah. And we heard from scientists also. We made our observation also. And then uh, we answered the two important questions who created the universe and what is its purpose? Actually, the purpose of the universe is uh, to purify the heart and return back to God. Currently, what is the impurity in our heart? We have a tendency to exploit. There are two vrittis, bhoga vritti, seva vritti. Tomorrow I'll tell you more about this. Seva vritti should be increased or bhoga vritti should be reduced. Hanuman represents seva vritti. Ravana represents bhoga vritti. So that is the impurity, the exploitative tendency. So in our classes, gradually we will learn how to increase the seva vritti and become happy ourselves and spread happiness to everybody in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am here for another 10 15 minutes. If anybody wants to personally meet me and ask questions, they can ask. Okay. Yeah. See, my, my name is Rajesh Das. Yesterday, some people came and asked me what's my name. So, if you go to my channel, YouTube channel, Rajesh Das, you will find one very interesting thing called Behavioral Science for Youth. That will help you in day-to-day -day challenges like anger management, time management, many things like that. You know, balancing your work and life. It's called as behavioral science for youth. It's a playlist. I think as soon as you open the tradition the channel, you will find it first, I think. Also, if you want to learn Bhagavad Gita completely, full Bhagavad Gita, I have spoken it in 108 sittings, each sitting 30 minutes only. It is called Gita Amrita Bindu. You will find it in playlist. Gita Amrita Bindu. So, you can see at your leisure. I'm just telling you because nowadays many of our lives are very busy. Whenever you get time here and there, 30 30 minutes, if you're here, you'll complete the Gita. Along with pictures and just like I show the videos, like that, I show a lot of videos there also. Okay? See that. Hare Krishna. Yes. Once again, thank you very much for all of the coming. Thank you for presenting so elaborately and a lot of detail. And very entertaining videos too, uh, and so much informative videos. Thank you very much for Sarah Tavisham, who has mentioned, who is available. So, in case you have any questions, you can post it. And we can have a question for you. Also, uh, we are at the end of our discussion. So, by leaving, you can speak a bit of the Sarah. And also, tomorrow we'll be here at the same time. And uh, we all must request you to please come on time today. Um, like uh, uh, for for us taking three days, so we had to start a session late. And actually, starting session late is like punishing those who come on time. So, in just in just of all, make us all available to come on time. And also, we have two more sessions tomorrow and after. You all find six thirty a little too early. You want to start at six forty five, then we can keep it six forty five to eight fifteen. You think it's a suitable time? Is it better? So with 645 to 815, we can keep it. 645 is, is that fine? Right? We can have a raise of hand. How many prefer that? 645 to 815, we can finish. Is it good for you? Is it all right? I think many like it, I think. A okay. sound will be very late. Yes, if you start at sound, it becomes 830. 645 to 815. So tomorrow we will test 645. And also all those who have so until our seven forty five, our Prabhu or the Prasad just taking part of their attendance all those who are not here. So in case also we uh, actually I am going to give this Vedas and science, I told you. And one more thing I told you I'll give you. Yes. So those uh, links I will give you.
that's all in google drive is available if you link if you click it you'll get a lot of valuable this kind of uh, things to show to your friends also they can show huh? make sure you give your email uh, they have your email here they can so, so you can send them exactly so in case anyone who has only shared your name in case you have registered we have your name and email right but in case you haven't registered and say in case you didn't meet our guru please do share your email id as well what what about the, this word is an online they have shared yeah we have all the names right yeah you have all the names okay okay yeah because of a mistake from us so we again shared link for registration I think I come from India, Indore, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. I'm um, a huge fan of yours. <laughs> yeah, I constantly yeah. listen to your lectures. I okay. get inspired. I make notes and hear okay. what you say. You are in Indore, Indore. near Ujjain. Yes, I come to Ujjain always. I will come when you come to Ujjain. He's very Spanish. Will ask you to ah, I know very well. Cave, cave. Yes, cave. Yeah. So we are part of cave. He's my shiksha guru. Yeah. Okay. So whatever.